So today I'm going to do a hybrid setup on a Babble App Pure Drive. Um, this particular player um, I string for quite a lot and his favourite setup after testing lots of different things is Technofiber Thermical Red Code, used to be Pro Red Code, uh, the 1.25 Poly, uh, which you can see here, um, or here. And um, for the crosses, we're going to use Technofiber multi uh again 1.25 uh, for the multi -feel. Um, I've got all sorts of colours, but he just wants to go for natural so it doesn't look too crazy. Um, the reason why he likes this setup, the reason why he has requested this, he's suffered from uh, arm injuries, um, or so, so, certainly elbow um, injuries over the last uh, year or so. And since I've been stringing for him this way, it's alleviated it. So we tried a number of different things. He likes poly strings. He likes the, um, the red code, um, but he just needed things softening up a little bit. So um, the suggestion to him was, I'm not sure if you can see it in the video, but um, I've actually enlarged the grip. So underneath here, um, we've got some um, a grip sleeve, which has just made it uh, bigger. So he's not having to grip his racket quite so tightly um, and a nice soft grip on top. Um, and we've also added some weight to the head of the racket as well. Um, by memory, um, I think we've got something like 10 grams worth of uh, weight added to the top. So I've doubled up a little bit on here. Um, normally, or sometimes you can actually put the, uh, the tape underneath um, the bumper strip. It looks a little bit cleaner doing it this way. Um, however, on this occasion, because we've been testing out a few different things, we just decided to keep it simple here. He's not too bothered about the aesthetics of it. Um, so that's the way, why we've done it that way. And we found a setup that works. He's been um, uh, pain free with his elbow for a long period of time now. So we're happy we're sticking with this, um, but we've also lowered the tension as well. So we're gonna have 45 pounds worth of tension on the main strings and we're gonna have 50 pounds tension on the cross strings. Um, for those who want to know a little bit more about how hybrid setup actually work. Some of you may know loads about it, some of you may not know so much, but essentially whichever string is in the mains, that is where you're going to get the majority of the feel when you're hitting uh, the ball. So um, if we're using poly, that's going to be the kind of driving string. What we're doing on the cross strings, we're adding a softer multi-filament to the cross strings, which will then just soften it up a little bit. If I was to switch it around and have um, the multi-filament in the main strings, then that would be the main characteristic of the string bed. So it'd feel more soft than it would hard. And again, we've tried lots of different things out and this is his preference. It tends to work well for him and he has no need to try anything else. So we're going to stick with this for now. Um, the aim is that gradually we're going to increase tension with him. We're going to um, at some point remove probably the multi-filament as well just because it, the, endure, the durability isn't always brilliant when you've got poly on multi-filament. Um, the multi-filament tends to go fairly quickly uh, because of the friction against the uh, against the polys. So at some point, we're gonna try and peter it down a little bit, but adding weight to the head, adding uh, an extra grip size onto the grip, and also uh, softening up the string bed a little bit, that seems to have helped him a bit. So we get 45 pounds worth of tension for the main strings on this one. Um, getting going now. Um, as is pretty common with rackets that I string, certainly for tennis anyway, um, I've got my backup babble app starting clamp just here, which um, I generally tend to use when you're dealing with higher tensions, certainly with poly strings as well. It's generally a good idea to have that babble app well, I've got a babble like clamp, um, but have that starting clamp there. Um, it just stops extra string slippage when you're when you're pulling. So it's a bit of a kind of insurance policy, really. But you know, I talk about that in a few of my videos, so I won't require too much more. Um, so I'm going to string three. Start with I'm going to string three ahead. Start with on the side. I'm not going to tension this particular string that I'm pulling through, that's just there to save for the time in a minute. And what you should really do is, as best practice is really to have two strings um, ahead, maybe even three strings on the one here, but no more than that because you want to even the tension spread. And 
reduce the risk of deforming the racket when you're pulling the strings across. Really, really important when you're doing the main strings. Because the last thing you want to have is a lopsided racket and it puts additional stress on the frame. Another thing which you can do um, when you're adding weight to the uh, end of the racket using the lead tape is actually use a space in between the posts there so that you're not actually pressing down on the weight with, with the post. Um, as I said, on this one, we've been trying lots of different things so we've added weight, we've taken weight away. So whereas originally there was um, a space in between, there's now an extra layer of lead tape on top of that that just covers that rather than removing it if i don't need to remove it and it's not going to be damaged too much after then that's fine i mean lead tape is not overly expensive it's only you know a few pounds at most so or a few dollars so i'm not too worried if the lead tape gets a little bit damaged during this process we can always add more if we need to if it becomes really untidy but typically I would leave the gap there. So as you can see now, two ahead on this one. So we're gonna go onto this one now and make sure we're two ahead on this side before we switch over to the other one as well. So as you can see now, we've got an even number of mains tensioned. So now I'm gonna be two ahead. So it's not too bad going three ahead when you start off in the middle of the racket, just because there's less, it's, it is more central, there's more support on there. Yeah, and trying to get relatively close to the frame. I always try to leave a little bit of distance for the frame. Um, I, personally think it's a little bit kinder on strings. And I'm not going to tension this one. I'll tension that at the end. come to the part where we tension it so I'm just gonna add 10% of the tension uh, and again some of you will some of you won't know this but the reason why we add that extra 10% tension is because you tie off by hand so that little tiny space there you'll get a little bit of slip as you tie um, as you tie off so we work out roughly about 10% you can do a bit more if you want to but Roughly 10% extra tension just mitigates that extra slip. So using a Parnell knot here, and seeing as I'm filming this during, during, whoops, on the wrong side. Uh, seeing as I'm filming this during Wimbledon season, thought it would only be apt to say congratulations to Mr. Parnell, as he's actually strung for Ashley Barty yesterday, who won the uh, women's singles title at Wimbledon so proof that these things work because the man himself who created this particular type of knot had a winner yesterday so again I've just stuck the extra 10% on this side as well so when you're pulling that it should be about the same tension when you're testing it using the starting clamp there just to pull just makes life a little bit easier and also when you do lots of rackets so if you're going to do 20 30 rackets in a day if you're stringing on tour or at a tournament then little things that protect the hands from developing mega blisters and things always help There we go. Right now on to cross strings. So 
the crosses, this part of it, the process, we're going to add an extra 10% onto the multi-filament. So the general rule of thumb is to uh, subtract 10% on the polys from what you would do with a multi-filament or synthetic gut, or natural gut even. Um, so as I'm using the multi-filament now, I'm just going to add that 10% back in. Different ways of starting it off. Personally, I like to use a starting clamp on the outside. So I'm just going to thread or weave rather the I didn't catch that. first couple of, that's my Apple watch saying it didn't understand what I was talking about. So I'm just going to quickly thread the first couple of crosses through. What I'm doing here, so I've taken this from a new pack, this multi-filament. So I'm just going to sharpen the end off a little bit just so it goes through the gap a bit better. There we go. Really important when you're using any softer string, or any string really, um, but especially softer string against the poly, is to make sure you don't pull it through so fast that you damage the string on it. So Parnell pad, starting clamp on the outside. Just make sure I've got enough room to tension it off after. Yep, I do. Now I'm going to pull both these two top crosses at the same time. Reason being is pulling this one at 50 pounds, which are where I want. Obviously the top one isn't going to be pulled to the same tension because you're effectively double pulling um, those. But we add an extra 10% onto this one afterwards, so it's fine. You don't need to worry about that particular one there because you're going to tension that string a bit later on. Some people decide to tension it at the end and then tie it off. Others, like me, will do it after I've done the first two or three um, crosses on here. Also, another thing with multi-filament, same with poly as well, just keep an eye on the string there. Just make sure it doesn't get any kinks in it as you're pulling it through. The last thing you want is to have damaged string because it will break quicker and won't perform as well either. And again, if you've seen any of my other videos, we always string one ahead here, um, which actually enables um, you to string quicker and also less friction as well. We, we tension every string individually but we just string one ahead just because it is better for the strings actually and quicker. So I'm adding an extra 10% tension here. I'm going to do the tie off. So as you can see, that's protecting that string there from losing any tension. I'm going to leave myself a bit of room here. Again, another reason for that 10%, just because if I've had it too close, then there wouldn't be enough room to be pulling that knot effectively. I'd rather pull or certainly have um, enough room to pull a decent knot. I'm going to come around this side of it. The knot at all. Yeah. Give it a good tight bam back. the clamp there we go we've got a nice knot now if i'm using natural gut my go-to would be to create an extra tie off hole so that i could actually tie gut to gut or poly to poly um, gut especially it's not too bad with multi-filaments and synthetic guts but um, if you use natural gut it's really worthwhile tying that gut to gut it'll stick a lot better less chance of slipping or not coming out Generally won't happen, it's more best practice, but it's just a good little rule to follow. But, you know, with with this racket, it's fine. I've, I've done this, at, this racket loads, actually, so I know this racket will be fine doing that. And again, it's one of those things that some stringers will categorically say it makes a big difference. String gut to gut, poly to poly, or multi-filament to multi-filament. Others will say no, it makes no difference whatsoever. So it's generally only with, with gut that I'll normally do that. 
That's just the best practice thing, really. Different ways of weaving. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm actually using two different methods of, of weaving. One is the kind of slip slide, which I'm doing. The other one is just normally weaving it through. To, to be honest with you, depending on how warm my fingers are, I'll go either way, but it's fairly early in the morning when I'm recording this. And I've just decided that I'm gonna just alternate, play around a little bit with it. So for anybody who wants to know a little bit more about multi-filament strings, um, Technofiber, I would probably say, I think I'm a big fan of Technofiber as a whole in terms of rackets and strings, but personally, I think they make the best multi-filament strings out there. I mean, Yonex has got some good options with their Rexus strings as well. Um, but Technofiber, they're a specialist multi-filament string manufacturer um, especially on the squash side where probably about 80 to 90 percent of all pro players will use technofiber strings normally uh, the 305 string or dynamics vp string but in tennis as well if you're looking for a really good quality multi-filament string technofiber are exceptional i mean favorite strings for tennis to string with on the multi-filaments would be Probably the X1 biphase, um, and um, as a it's a really good mid-range multi-filament option. I, I like the multi-fill, which I'm streaming with here. Um, it's pretty durable as far as multi-filaments go. Um, a little bit harder than some multi-filaments, but it's also I, I think it maintains tension a little bit better than some as well. So it's a good option. It's, it's significantly cheaper than the other Technofiber multi-filaments as well. But certainly, you know, if, if you want the absolute best multi-filament, X1 biphase, in my opinion, that's that's the one. Um, Technofiber have actually recently, in the last six, seven months or so, introduced a new multi-filament hybrid poly string called the Triax, which is essentially, it's like a hybrid in one string. So you get the best of, a, a poly and the best of multi-filament all in one. Uh, it basically feels like a like a hard multi-filament string. So if you're looking for an option where you don't need to do a hybrid setup all the time, then the Triax is a good option. Again, more expensive than the multi-fill, probably not quite as expensive as the um, X1 biphase, but that's a really good string. I was actually part of the testing team on the on the triax and really enjoyed streaming with it and that actually creates another option for hybrid streaming if you want to soften the string bed up just a little bit maybe use the poly and use a triax because it'll be a little bit more durable than some multi-filaments So I'm not going mega quick on this one. I think this will probably take me somewhere around 20 minutes to string this, this particular racket. But you know, it's someone else's racket, so I'm not being ridiculously fast or anything on this. As you start getting closer towards the throat area, of the racket, what you tend to find is that it takes a little bit longer to do the, do the cross strings just because you've got a little bit more traffic, there's less room to maneuver. So, 
what I'll probably do in a minute is start s slipping and sliding the strings through here when I need to. So another thing to note is you'll probably see me, I'm just straightening some of these cross strings as I'm going through as well. So we don't have too much of a kind of smiley face with the cross strings on the racket after. You want to try and keep them as straight as you can when you're stringing. And the main reason for that, it's not just an aesthetic thing and time saving thing for not having to straighten them afterwards. It's also the straighter they are, the, the better the tension maintenance because you've got far less, um, far less room for those strings to lose tension if the string is pointing like that. It needs to come straight, it's gonna lose tension doing that or it means you haven't tensioned it quite correctly. So just use your fingers as you're pulling it through, just to do that. I mean, it's very difficult to get them completely straight as you're stringing. So you will use a, um, a blunt edge all afterwards, just to sort it all out, but it just do does help. It's a much better job. It's also important to pull it through a little bit slower when you get towards the end of the racket as well um, because you've got much more friction because the string string bed's a lot tighter down this end so it's really important to actually pull the strings a lot slower through uh, because there is that much more friction so just something to be a little bit careful of don't pull it through to the extent that you're going to sacrifice the integrity of the strings it's just the one I'm not going to use the Diablo on just because there's not enough string left over for me doing it that way. So final string, add that 10%, again just leave a little room just so I can tie the knot off correctly. do actually is just snip that string a little bit just makes my life a little bit easier when I'm tying off that knot less room to confuse matters on the um, mains on the polish you might have noticed me using my pliers um, what I'd like to do is just flatten off the ends on the poly strings just so they're not quite as sharp. Okay. Obviously you don't need to do it on the multi-filament guts or normally synthetic guts just because they're far softer string but if it helps to stop players from scratching themselves. Um, with the Parnell knot one of the advantages is you get a string that's nice and flush should be pretty much pointing upwards um, like we've got on here rather than to the side so you'll know it you'll know just how good the knot skill knot skills of your professional or non-professional racket stringer are depending on what the knots actually look like so you see there's a little bit of a smile on here so get my blunt edged all it's not going to damage anything It's really important to do this straight after you've strung a racket um, because with multi-filament strings, especially multi-filament strings, what they tend to do is they'll notch up and they'll stay in place. So unless you move them quickly, they'll snap back into the whatever position they've notched in to start with. So some people forget to do the main strings as well. Always best practice to get the mains done as well when I'm coming in I'm coming slightly diagonal angle I'm not trying to damage those strings I'm trying to glide it through so I'm not actually 
hitting anything directly. That rattle you can hear is actually just <laughs> the clamps. Normally if I put them in here it wouldn't, but obviously you don't want to hit the clamps. Pretty straight. So there we go. Just carefully release that racket. Make sure all's absolutely fine. Yeah, that sounds pretty good to me.